association says the country has ways to go when it comes to controlling the use of tobacco. Their annual report says the U.S. is failing when it comes to federal tobacco taxes. D grades were given out to quit smoking treatments and regulation of tobacco products. The report did give anti-smoking media campaigns an A. And in the 20 years of releasing this report, Maine is the only state to receive straight A's in a given year. Good evening, everyone. I'm Amanda Hill. And I'm Pat Callahan. This year has been anything but a perfect report card. New Center Maine's Sam Rogers explains. Tobacco remains the leading cause of preventable de death and disease in Maine and the country. Each year, the American Lung Association releases report cards to keep track of individual states' efforts to limit tobacco-related disease and death. States are graded on five categories. This year's uh, report card is kind of a mixed bag and one that a kid might leave in the bottom of the backpack and hide from the parents. The two A grades for Maine this year, the strength of smoke-free workplace laws and access to tobacco quitting services. Funding for prevention programs and Maine's tobacco taxes earned C grades. Maine's effort to end the sale of all flavored tobacco products was given an F. We are, have some bright spots on the report card, but unfortunately there are some marks that need improvement. Lance Bushy of the ALA says raising the tobacco tax would help boost that C grade. Maine hasn't raised its tobacco tax in 17 years, and tobacco taxes may, are one of the best ways to prevent youth from starting smoking and help uh, adult users make a quit attempts. According to the 2022 ALA State of Tobacco Control Report, 16.5% of adults in Maine use tobacco and 33% of high schoolers do too. And that's because of these addicting flavors that are found in these products. See, they're, they're disguising the taste of nicotine and kids are getting hooked. BJ McAllister is the campaign manager of Flavors Hook Kids. The advocacy group says flavored tobacco products attract younger Mainers. What we hope is that lawmakers see this momentum that's happening across the state in all corners of the state and decide to take action. Bangor became the first city in Maine to pass a ban on flavored tobacco products. Portland City Council is expected to vote on the matter as well, but Bushy says it's not enough. We really hope that Governor Mills and the legislature move forward with this proposal and, and make it a statewide uh, effort. An effort that requires a vote and if passed would make Maine the sixth state to ban those flavored products. Sam Rogers, New Center, Maine. Opponents of the bill to ban the sale of flavored tobacco products argue the state would lose tens of millions of dollars without those purchases. Others point out the ban could lead to the potential of illegal sales. The bill is currently being workshopped in a legislative committee. 